the pushback by the Saskatchewan government over gender transitioning medical procedures for those under the legal age of consent has been garnering some attention. At the recent Conservative Policy Convention in Quebec City, delegates voted to prohibit surgical interventions for those under the age of 18. But those on the other side of this debate may feel their fundamental rights are being violated if the gender they were assigned at birth doesn't match with who they identify with today. So, should these procedures be available to those under the legal age of consent? Our question. Should gender transitioning medical procedures be prohibited for people under the age of 18? So this is where we enter the, the twilight zone. But it's a twilight zone, again, everything is a point of observation. A twilight zone to a mainstream journalist will be perfectly bloody logical to someone who's done 50 uh, 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 years or so, or 25 years, or how many years it is of research into something. Um, and uh, this is an important point about perception. One of the greatest ways that humanity is controlled is by the suppression of the sense of the possible. In that link, you are watching Axiom Series on the Wild Bill YouTube Network, WBYTN. And as always, I begin with don't forget to like this video, push this out there to get, uh, get discussion happening. Subscribe to WBYTN, hit your notification bell. Feel free to leave comments questions, observations, and uh, most importantly, don't forget to share this content with your friends and family. The topic today is that what, what's been called gender affirming care, under that term gender affirming care, but it's surgery and such. And it's quite a, a profound discussion. Like it's, uh, no. Granted, I'm not a parent myself. Because one of the main issues about in, in this topic is is parents are being eliminated from from the decision making process or input. That's quite disturbing in itself because parents have to be involved because it's their responsibility to raise their children. And they must be involved in, with somebody under age 18 in that this decision making process. It's a very emotionally charged topic. Discussions get heated. I've seen some stuff 
on you, you, YouTube and other places that that show violence can't happen. And uh, so my perspective is a single man, I'm not a parent. I never had kids personally myself. Um, that niece is not using. So that's the closest I can come. Being an uncle. Being an uncle, you know. Whether whether I'm directly involved with their life or not, I'm, I'm still an uncle. I'm a cousin. I'm a brother. When my parents were alive, I was a son. Grandson. So, this particular topic, I'm not exactly on the outside of it, neither is anybody else, but I'm not in it. Okay. So, so the question about should this type of life-changing decision to have surgery, it, 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 it's about a sex change, is what it is. Okay? But there's so much... I don't even remember the word for it, but it's... It's associated with uh, consciousness, you know, because that decision to have that type of surgery, it not only changes the individual person, but it changes relationship dynamics with the parents, with the brothers, with the uncles, the cousins, so it flows out like that. And it changes, changes the dynamics of society. And, uh, so it's about that. And, because I don't think I'll, right now, personally speaking, I think it should be prohibited for people under the age of 18 myself. Because it's the parents' responsibility to raise their kids. And uh, society has decided that 18 is, is a good age to not let go exactly, but a good time frame to nurture. their child to be able to take everything into consideration of making a decision like that because things <clears throat> but for what I'm seeing in this topic though is parents being eliminated from the decision making process arbitrarily and there's other things that concern to me, the way school teams, see, schooling seems to be dealing with this. And, uh, but, uh, so let's go to this documentary I saw on CPAC. It's, it's like an, uh, news magazine show you know kind of thing has different segments and this segment is about gender affirming surgery so let's check it out let's uh because they went to the street and talked talk to random people you know what i mean
cool. Let's listen in here for a while. I think so because it's, it's a procedure that's so radical to alter your body in, in such a way. Um, some type of um, medical intervention and parental um, oversight. Uh, I think it's mandatory that something like that should be uh, in place uh, as opposed to uh, a young person kind of solely making that decision on their own. Yeah, absolutely. I think prohibiting any kind of health care uh, for anybody is foolish. Uh, I think individuals should be able to make that choice if, if they have to make that choice with family members. I think they should be making that choice and all the options that they need for the good of their, their physical and mental well-being. Those should all be on the table and it's really, as long as they're medically sound and the medical community agrees that they're they're legitimate, then, then that's all we need. I think we have the laws we need in place for governing those kinds of decisions. I'm not really sure. I mean, legally, I think if you're a parent, and of course I have my daughter here, we're responsible for them under 18, so I'd say right now, uh, I think parents have to give their blessings on stuff, don't they? Um, whether they should or not, I, I don't know. Um, at what age should uh, kids have the license to decide on their own fates? Well, that's a big question. I mean, uh, being from Quebec, we were allowed to drink at 18, then I came to Ontario and it was 19. But you're allowed to be, you're allowed to go into the military at 18 and uh, go and get yourself killed. Should we be allowed to vote at 16? I don't know. I think those are good questions that we have to ask ourselves. I don't know the answer. I don't have children, so for me that's a really difficult question to answer. I don't know. I don't really feel that, you know, I have the right to determine somebody else's choices and another family's decision. Um, you know, we can all have our opinions and, you know, judgments on whether we personally think something is right or wrong, but um, when it comes to, like, prohibition and having the government get involved, I don't know, that makes it, that's not really, I don't really know if that's their business. I think well, there's a first little portion of that, and, uh, Kind of a mixed little bit in there, you know. But what was common in there was the importance of the parents being involved in that. That was quite quite a constant theme about it, parenthood. And, uh, but, you know, it goes so much deeper, this, this issue, because it's put forth as a disorder, gender dysphoria, and I really don't understand anything about that either, like, it's, uh, But it seems like quite the thing to go through, you know. But again, it it goes to consciousness, relationship dynamics, and all that is. Another constant in there was the inclusion, the importance of the inclusion of the parents, um, the family. And that's what seems to be elim being eliminated, these parents' rights. And uh, parents' right to know, even. You know what I mean? Because some of the things that I've seen about this show and indicate that school boards and teachers have been, I don't know how, how to say it, that'd be kind, the nice way to say it, but 
they seem to be going behind the parents' backs to inflame this. Go behind the parents' backs, seemingly. Which uh, enters into uh, child abuse a areas of of uh, conditioning the child or the minor into a state of inferiority, meaning they 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 put little weight, little. It seems like they're being conditioned to believe that they are inferior than what they were born. And, and that could be child abuse. Because the consequences of, of this type of stuff, this type of decision and surgery and stuff, involves um, hormone-altering drugs. and such, which, which uh, seems to have serious side effects, serious consequences, not side effects, consequences to it, in terms of sterility, being sterile, and such. And, uh, it, from what I understand, it's irreversible, almost, like that type of hormone change and all that kind of stuff. It's irreversible. And making a decision like that at, at a young age could, dis could conceivably destroy somebody's life, believe it or not, because I've seen things like the little videos about this type of topic where where a minor went through the surgery and then when they got older in their 20s they regretted it because of, of, of medical conditions they have to deal with the rest of their life and such which is uh sense of topic itself, I understand that. So let's go ahead and listen to some more of what was talked about there because this topic is so broad in scope yet You know, it's, I, right now, I still believe it should, should be prohibited for minors, myself. So anyway, let's go ahead and listen to some more. Oh, it, it depends. Um, so it's a yes and no answer for me, but I think what's really important is just um, letting people express themselves, really, and if it's... If it's an issue, it definitely needs to be up for discussion with lots of healthcare people involved and family and lots of support so that it is making the right decision. But I would say no. Yes. Um, I think my rationale for that is, uh, is if we recognize that uh, people under the age of 18 can't drink alcohol, they can't, you know, they're getting a driver's license at 16. They can't have a firearms license till they're 18. They can't vote till they're 18. They can't, they, all of these things that they cannot do because of, because of the ability to, or because they're uh, questioning their judgment, then why would we let them do permanent, uh, make permanent changes to their body uh, prior to being fully developed intellectually and, you know, maturing emotionally? Yes, I think they should. Because they're kind of young until you make a decision like that. It's a pretty darn de ser serious decision. So yeah, you should be a little bit more mature. That's a difficult one, but I think that uh, 
if that's what the person chooses, then they should be allowed to have it. But I think, as in any medical procedure, for somebody under 18, there should probably be parental consent, just because it is a medical, a deeply medical procedure to be done. No, I don't think it should be banned or prohibited. It should be a case-by-case -case basis because blanket statements exclude people who really need it. And suffering for 15 years, knowing that you should have a different gender, is cruel. Okay, you need that. Um, I don't think that it uh, should be banned. I think it should be the choice of uh, their, it, it should be their choice or, and uh, they should consent to it, but I don't think that it should be banned. No, they should not be. As like it's been said before, and I'm sure people say it again, that if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. Like you can't go through life not knowing who you are. Definitely. Why? Why? Because they're not old enough to make a decision, an informed decision, let's say. Well, the age of majority is, is 18. Um, I joined the Army at 16, and I joined the British Army at age 16. And uh, to go in the Army, my mother had to sign a dotted line for me. So most adults aren't, aren't adults until they're 18, so I don't think that kids, just the younger children, should be making decisions that are going to affect the rest of their lives. There's some interesting perspectives in that little, little segment there. Like, uh, so far, there's nothing presented to me that has me rethinking that it should be prohibited myself. Because I could only recall growing growing things that I went through growing up and it, it wasn't that going through something like this related to gender dysphoria and all that kind of stuff but to be able to make a decision like that you really have to talk to people talk to people that you trust and the first person that you should, first people that you should be able to trust, to help guide you better, is parents. And that's still a constant in that video and a constant aspect to this whole thing. Inclusion of, of, of parents, the family, you know, and uh, so all I could say now is, is I, I can honestly could say that I, I wish them well, and uh, and hope they make the best decision for themselves. You know, I, I hope parents get involved with that. So, because, because you never stop learning, you never stop growing, you never stop expanding your perspectives, which directly influence your, your perception on things. So I wish them all well that are going through this struggle. Um, discussion must continue about it. And, uh, it's very deep. It, it, this is a very deep, deep topic, you know. It really is because. Because what I've been shown about all this is the arbitrary exclusion of parents. Um, there's been discussion about what's being taught in schools and such reading materials. So maybe a little more research into this 
Here's an order for myself. You know? And, uh, because really I, I could imagine how hard it is. I could, I, I could imagine how, how hard it is going through something like that, man. And, uh, if I were to give advice about it, I would, I would ask you young people to just be patient and uh, don't make any rash decisions and always talk to your parents. Always have an open heart to heart with your family, your parents. So with that, I'll, I'll say thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to WBYTN. Feel free to leave comments, observations, questions. And don't forget to share this content with your friends and family. And, uh, with that, I'll say, Bama P. The, the original video, the link to it, will, will be in the description. So you can look at it yourself. I mean, so with that, I'll say, Bama P. Be good, be safe. So, so controlling the sense of the possible because if you're doing things out here and you've got the sense of the possible here then when people like me say this is what's going on that goes you're bloody mad that's not possible that can't be going on um, and, and the biggest problem is that and it's not every one of them by the way I was talking to one the other day who was uh, very kind of intelligent involved, involved in all this, but this in general is my experience after 25 years of the uh, perception of the possible of a mainstream bloody journalist. And that's why, that's why people who speak the greater truth and have done throughout the period of the media have invariably been ridiculed and dismissed because that cannot perceive that the possibility that it can be true.